I came to Dan. Another company wanted to do this movie with me in L.A. And I started going down the line with these guys, and I didn't like the way it was going creatively. I literally just texted Dan. I said, I have a movie about comedians that go on the road and start robbing comedy clubs. And I said, it's my best idea yet. I am going down the road with some people that I'm not happy with right now. If you're interested, I'll shoot it in Detroit. Dan writes back, no such thing as a good deal with a bad guy. So I said, if you want to do it, let me know. He fucking gets the script, and a week later... I don't even bother him about it because I'm like, there's no way Dan's going to do this. A week later, he texts me, and his text message is literally my deal on a text. Welcome to this week's edition of The Raz Report. I am very excited to have on this comedian, famous comedian, but he does have a comedy special, Who the F***, or no, Who the F is Mike Young. So, Who the F is Mike Young, is that right? Who the F. We, we, we make sure we just say F. Okay, but I, I mean... It's, yeah, no, you're edgy. Uh, yeah, I'm a little edgy here. You're yeah. edgy. She, she got, uh, the producer got a little worried that I said that in the first sentence, but I, I think it's good. Who the F is Mike Young? Okay, so excited to have Mike Young on. The guy has been performing with some of the biggest guys in the world from Sebastian. True. It, he should be just a one-name person. Like, his last name is just too complicated. He's gone through one-name iterations. He's actually, he's done like a year at one name. What is this, how, to say, how do you say the? Uh, Maniscalco. Maniscalco. So you knew this guy when he, when people didn't know him? 100%. 20 years ago, I knew him when he was a waiter at the Four Seasons and a comedian at the Comedy Store. And every night, he would come to the store, do 20 minutes, put his waiter outfit on, and go back to the hotel and be a waiter. Was he that funny then? He has always been funny, man. He's obviously elevated his game to another level, but he has always been one of my friends. Because, you know, when you're a comedian and your friends are comedians, at some point you just stop laughing. You like yeah. you, None of us like to watch each other all the time. But Sebastian was always one friend who I could watch and laugh every time. So, yes, I'm not shocked at where he is. You're not shocked. So there should be a business, maybe there is, where you could take bets on people in the comedian space because, like, he's blown up. Like, he's filling out Little Caesars. We're in Detroit today, Little Caesars Arena. And is he is he filling it out because you're the opening act or is it because, I don't know, you know? It's I mean, bro, I'd love to tell you that he filled it out, but they didn't even know I was coming until Tuesday before the Friday show. He called me on a Tuesday, and he goes, this is literally what he said. He goes, Detroit, Chicago, Cleveland, you in? I was on the couch at my mom's house. Good imitation. That was good. And I'm like, I'm in. And that was it. I went and did my hometown show, Little Caesars Arena. And no, man, he, he's been ground, grinding and like doing the road for 20 solid years and just building and building and building. And we were, to, you know, we were on the road together for years before that. The first 10 years we did shows together. But then around year 10 or 11, I started directing movies and writing movies and kind of got off the train of stand-up. And so the rest of my friends kind of just, boom, they just started blowing up in the stand-up world. And it's, it's been awesome to see, man. It's, I'm proud of him. He's my buddy. You know, I get more calls for his shows than I do my own, which upsets me a little bit. And, uh, yeah, bro, I could tell you a lot of stories about yeah. random cities of people that want to see Sebastian and hit me up for tickets, which I can oh. barely ever get. Oh, yeah, that's – so – when he perform, when you were performing with him, how many people hit you up a t for tickets for like Little Caesars Arena or the C Cleveland? I don't know where you guys did in Cleveland, but I would say you know eleven people, 11 per, people. per show per show, and I, and I, I don't get anybody tickets, no one? except my mom because Sebastian and my mom are tight, and Sebastian stayed in my mom's, you know, in my mom's house during well, that, our tour. Yes, that's where I was going to go. So did, on your tour when you guys were younger, or is it now when you, Sebastian stayed at your mom's house? It was ten years ago. It was the Young American Comedy Tour. So I, cr I created a comedy tour called the Young American Tour. And it was me, Sebastian, Brett Ernst from Cobra Kai, Bobby Lee, who you know, uh, Burt Kreischer, who's a big comedian yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, huge. Huge. You know him? Very well, bro. He's, he's on, we were on tour for a year together. Me, wow. Kreischer, Sebastian, Steve Byrne. It was an um, unbelievable tour, bro. It was, it was when I knew I liked to put things together. Has anyone ever done Six Degrees of Mike Young yet? No, but thank you for the title, bro, because... <laughs> At the at the Ned, they're like, "Yo, we got to do a movie here. What's the title?" I like Six Degrees of Mike Young. Yeah, the Ned is a uh, hotel in uh, New York yeah. that Wednesday you host with Richie Akiva, yeah. right? Um, when I was there, uh, Robin Thicke was uh, there. You just had the guy from Silicon Valley perform. Yeah, he's there every week now. Is he? Yeah, he he won't leave. Really? He, he comes every week. T.J. Miller, he's he, awesome. See, he, like you should be. Can you make like a Netflix special from the the Ned? 
I couldn't make a Netflix special, so I got to get the cameras in there, and we got to shoot it properly. I mean, we got great cameras here. Look at this shit, you know? Yeah, bro, here yeah, we go. We, we got two. What is this, 2K? We got three cameras, and two lights. I mean, the microphones, a mixer. You can do this and have this stuff and see if people want to. You can sell it and, you know, just get the distributor, and there you go. I'll get Benzinga their first yes. Netflix special. There you go. Brought to you by I'll, Benzinga. Although you say that, you saw me in a Netflix special. You wrote me a, you're like, dude, I'm watching uh, Eat the Rich yeah. with um, about GameStop. And of course. Yeah. Did you remember you know what I'm talking about? Of course. Do I know? I, yeah, bro. Two weeks ago, I'm watching a Netflix special on the GameStop debacle or whatever it yep. was, and there you are interviewing people that I knew in so, L.A. So here's the craziest. Oh, yeah. So the, the, the uh, Citron. Left. Left. Andrew left. So here's what happened. His Twitter got hacked. One of our guys reached out, came on our show. We have like 800 people watching it. All of a sudden, 30,000 people are there. All these Wall Street betters. This is before GameStop went crazy. They were, every YouTube show we have is like 99% thumbs up. These Wall Street bettors were calling me and my co-host, Luke Jacoby, a boomers. We didn't own GameStop. We were like 80% negative thumbs. Basically, I was forced into buying GameStop on that show. And the next show, Luke bought it on the show, 200 shares or something. I bought it by the end, but then I never showed that I bought it. They needed to see proof. So the next day, another 20,000 people come, and I had to show proof that I bought GameStop, that I wasn't a boomer. And this was all because Andrew left. You know, And so that Eat the Rich, they have part of the thing, right, where the guy came on our show. But what they don't realize is we were forced into buying GameStop because we didn't want to get all this negative karma stuff. So we had to buy it. Now, did I make all the money on it? No, because I, you know, disposed of it later. And I, yeah. and I was worried about it. I'm like, is this legal? But it was just like people pressuring me and calling me a loser for not owning it. So I bought a very small amount. It was 200 shares. It was like, at the time, GameStop was like at $14. So it wasn't like anything, Huge. you know, it went to like $450, like I, or more, I think it went to more than that actually. And, uh, but that was what happened when Andrew left, came on and they, and then he doesn't even do short selling stuff anymore. I mean, it's crazy. And you does know he, him. Does he, yeah, I do know him. Does he not do short selling stuff I don't think anymore? so. He was, I think his family and he didn't like it, that all these people yeah. were attacking him. It's, it's tough. It got I mean, scary for him. It got scary. I mean, just think if you're here, here, like, so Benzinga, we write about the stock market. I mean, our whole thing is. Everyone's so busy these days, so we try to, you know, answer the what, the who, and, like, what does it mean to you? So it's a who, what, where, why kind of thing. And so people, how people can take action. If you write negative stuff, so Gawker and those sites back in the day, they're, one, of the per, one of their past editors said, we would take a news item, no matter it was. Say Mark Cuban invested in some company. They would take the item and say, why does Mark Cuban want to take over the world? You know, like why they put a negative and people remember the negative articles and remember the negative comments. And so yeah. that's like interesting. It, yeah. Cause people want to, you know, that's when if you read about feedback about you, Mike, if you read about it and you see positive stuff, but when someone rips you, that's what you remember. Of course. I can't even take, are you kidding? When I did my man as a loser, this one, this one uh, reporter from the LA times wrote a negative review about my movie. Oh, my God. It crushed me so bad yep. that I was looking around to find out where he lived so I could egg his house. Yep. I was disturbed for so long. But then I had, let me name drop here. I had dinner with Todd Phillips, who directed The Hangover, The Joker. He's I was like, yo, bro, do you still get bummed out about negative reviews? So he tells me how everybody went against The Joker, which, by the way, made a billion dollars. But when the first Joker came out, because there's another one coming out. But when the Joker came out, he had a problem. So I go, oh, man. I go, this one dude at the L.A. Times, he goes, what's his name? I'm not going to say his name. But I said his name. He goes, bro, that's the guy that went against me. Oh, really? So, yeah. So at any level, you don't want negative. You know, you feel the negativity. You bust your butt for so damn long to, like, make a freaking movie. It's so hard to even get a movie done. And then some random dude with a freaking pen who's just mad that he's not a filmmaker or a writer or an artist that he wanted to be when he was 10 years old. You know, they critique you and they go in hard on you. So you're like, you know what? I will egg your house. So I'm on an egging tour right now. Well, so There's only a few people on it. it uh, the media, especially in sports, but in media, they tend to say a lot of false things. I remember um, someone said that Dan Gilbert bought the Tigers. And, like... Um, and it wasn't true at all. They just, like, put this stuff in, and then they make up, or he sold the calves or whatever. He wants, it was just total false, you know, false, and there's no accountability. And so I wanted right. to cre create a media site, w like, just like you have TripAdvisor, TripAdvisor's for reporters, and then you get a Pinocchio score for your, your that, that was my creation, Pinocchio score, the yeah. longer the nose for the most, you know, most incorrect things you have. Yeah. Because, like, Everyone was like saying, "It's you a know, free for all." Yeah, it's a free for all. Everybody's like, got like, their opinion; they could say it, and everybody like, can throw out random fake news 
And if it's negative, if it bleeds, it leads, right? That's, That's been going right. on forever. And family members literally would believe, oh, oh, you bought the, you're buying the Tigers, and it's just, t- and that's what. And so that LA Times writer, my guess is he knows. He needs to write negative no matter what, even if he likes it. Like, that's because if it bleeds, it leads. He started making fun of John Stamos. The guy's been acting s- steadily for 35 years. This poor, this guy's just randomly going in on everybody in my movie. So, yeah, okay, so I'll Ch- find you, bro. You'll find him. Hey, well, the last person I, well, there's probably more people I want to egg to, but um, I used to deliver pizza, Pizza Hut, Orchard Lake Road, West Bloomfield. <laughs> oh, and, okay. And Lone Pine, and there was a house I delivered. I even remember the street, like, with I in the house, and the guy gave me zero tip. This is 30 years ago, probably, and, yeah, and I want to egg that house. He gave me zero dollar tip. This kid, you know, like, still upset about that. Listen, bro, I egged at 40. I egged a, I egged no, you a, did. I egged a restaurant. You did? Yeah, in L.A. Why? You want to know why? Yeah. Because the restaurant was open till midnight. I knew one of the owners who was from Detroit. I went to the restaurant at 11.20 at night. It was still open for another 40 minutes. Bunch of people in there enjoying themselves. I walked up. Some dude opened the door. The manager, who was one of these, like, he had tattoos on his neck, a thing in his nose. He goes, yo, bro, we're closed. He slammed the door in my face. I go, I'll give this guy the benefit of the doubt. I'm just going to say I want to carry out, and then I'll, I'll leave. I open. <laughs> That's such a crazy story. He opens the door. I go, bro, I just want to carry out. I, I know the owner, whoever the owner is. I go, did you say the, did you say the name? Yeah, I said the name. He goes, I don't care who you know. I just told you we're closed. I go, bro, you're open till midnight. It says on the door. I know you're open till midnight. He goes, he goes, we're done. Boom, slams the door. I happen to be with my line producer of my movie, Italian guy from New York. I go, Vince, do me a favor, bro. Here's the keys to my car. Pull the car up on the corner right there. I'm going to the liquor store across the street to get a dozen eggs. He, this, by the way, shout out to Vince Maggio. He didn't even flinch. He gets my car, starts it, parks it on the corner on Sunset Boulevard. I go to the liquor store. I get a dozen eggs. I get in the passenger seat. And when the light turns green, I fire six solid eggs with a solid athletic were, arm. Were you already in the car, it. or did you stand and throw it? No, I was in the car, Are and you I sure? went over the passenger and, seat. And you, and you definitely got— Oh, yeah, it was right there. The, the bay window was about 20 feet away. Yeah. Clean, nice bay window, and just boom, boom, boom. And I egged an establishment, and I have no guilt about it at all. And did they, the, Then I called them later. I said, yo, how was breakfast? No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Did they know what the hell you— Yes, I did. And what they say, this whatever. They just F you, blah, blah, yeah. blah, who's this, who is this? And this was a Michigan owner of a restaurant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah bro. Uh, you, you, yeah, you hired the wrong don't, people. Don't F with the, uh, who the F is Mike Young? Don't F with Mike Young. Don't F with me, bro. Yeah, yeah. You'll get egged. So, so, yeah. Okay. Nobody gets hurt. It's just a cleaning that's situation. I, that's what I should have done. There's a place in Miami. I didn't have a reservation, okay? We had a car rental. And later I realized, like, friends like Irie would have got me in, but... We had a car rental. My wife, I said, we cannot pull, we pull out, we cannot have the car pull, pull in front. It was like Lamborghinis, Ferraris. Our car rental was probably like a, I don't know, it was like a Honda CRV <laughs> or something. It was something. a Camry. Yeah, it was a, basically a Camry. Yeah. Anyways, my wife <laughs> freaking can't find a parking spot somewhere. So then she pulls up to the valet and our freaking thing is like, it's like, well, what's this? It's like, it's the same thing as Eddie Murphy and Beverly Hills Cop when he pulls up with the yeah, cement Yeah, be truck. careful. Last he, time this happened. He, <laughs> that's right. That was the best line ever. Okay, that's, yeah. have you met Eddie Murphy, by the way? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Well, we're gonna go to this guy has more celebrity connections than anyone in this world. So just we're gonna go to that in a second. So not we, true. So we we, we go up to uh, oh my god, my wife will know because I've never been denied going into a bar like a, <laughs> a club and just my, a basic breakfast spot they wouldn't let you in. <laughs> we're going to dinner. We go in there and they're like, no, you can't get. I I pull out a hundred dollar bill, thinking I'm like a big mocker. Nope. Nope. So then I blame it on my wife. I'm like. Why'd you wear this nun outfit, you know? <laughs> like, it's like all these girls are walking, you know, and we didn't get uh, in. And um, it's, uh, it's you know the place, but, and um, I should have, I should have, the guy, I said, hey, we just want to, I want to like see, you know, it's like, it's right off the water. The boat, boats come there and hang out, and I should have come back with my eggs, but I, I, I never did. They're on the you. list. They're on the list. They're, they're, on, the they're list. on the list. And then I have my, I, now I've been invited, but yeah, they're on the list. Okay. Getting so, in is such a thing, man, right? Getting in. Everybody wants to get in. Everyone wants to get in. And then sometimes you get in, you go, why did I fight so hard to get in here? That's right. I probably, we probably would have gone in and been there for like, 25 minutes, yeah. you know? Like, why do you, you're, everyone wants to get in. They want to go where there's a line. If uh-huh. I opened a restaurant in town here, I would just, like, hire people just to, like, stand in line. You'd do great. You'd do great. You would kill it here. Because you just want to, you, you just want to get in. That's I've been, it. Yeah, I've gotten into many parties where I couldn't wait to go home. 
just, right. It's, it's like going to a piston game or going to – you want to get in because others want to get – you don't want to go to an empty place. Yeah, it's an interesting psychology, it, man. It, it's kind of funny because you kind of want, like, your own peace and your own place, yep. but yet you want to get in. Like, it's uh, – uh-huh. It's you don't learn that till later in life. It takes a while to learn that. Yeah. You know, as a kid, you want to always get in. Like, I remember L.A., when I first moved to L.A., I was so good at getting in clubs because I just knew that, like, the bouncers probably didn't know a lot of information, so I would just make shit up. Right. Like, the first club I got into in L.A., I told them I played for the Boston Celtics, and my name was Mike Young. No, you so didn't. I just used my regular name. I said it was Summer League. I was playing for the Celtics. Are you kidding? I looked in shape and in my 20s, and I got in. That worked. That worked. 100% it worked. I went with Jesse Itzler. You know Jesse? Jesse? Was he famous then? Yes. Jesse was famous as a rapper. He was Jesse yeah. James. Yeah. The, the he couldn't get in. He goes, Mike, we're never getting in here. This is like, there's a line out the door. I go, watch this. And I walk, and he still tells the story to this day. Wait, he went to God in because he wasn't, he wasn't like famous, famous. Though. Yeah, like he wasn't, yeah, he was, his, his yeah. video for like Shake It Like a White Girl was just yeah. about to come out. Okay. And, and nobody knew him in LA yet. Nobody knew any of us. But I was like, the, you know, bro, Detroit, I grew up in Southfield. I snuck into so many events with my boys. Yeah, yeah. Sneaking in was just a thing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like, uh, one of our friends ended up playing for, like, the Minnesota Vikings later in life. Yeah. He was, like, a star in Minnesota. Yeah. I went to Minnesota, Minnesota, Minnesota with him. He snuck us in to, like, Shaquille O'Neal's party. I was like, yo, Todd, you don't have to sneak in anymore. I goes, I love it. Yeah. Like, I love sneaking in. Yeah, sneaking in is sneaking a in, bro. Super Bowl party. I s- snuck into my share, a fair share of when they were in Detroit, and then it was... Uh, in LA, but that it's like so they're sneaking in is part of the part of the game. It's part of the game, man. That's, so okay, we're now we're gonna go back to uh, you. So you were comedian, but then you get into movies. How many movies have you written, directed, and I know you have a bunch of stuff in the queue, but let's go yeah, so, to the Mike Young career a little bit. So I started as a stand up, but always during my stand up, I've always been a writer. I've always written on the side. I've always been working on scripts, working on movies. I always saw making movies. Did you go to school for writing or anything? I did not. I went to Arizona University. I really took one creative writing class. Everybody in that class, and this this was like a moment, this was like a watershed moment for me. I was in a creative writing class, and all these kids were. I was made to feel like they were, like, way smarter than me. You know what I mean? They were yep. always, like, dropping these classic books, these novels. You know, Dickens, you know, Charles Dickens, Faust, Faulkner. They were just dropping knowledge left and right. You know, I, I came out of Southfield. I wasn't reading any classics at the time. So we have an assignment in class, and I write this short story. And I write it in about 45 minutes, and I write it at the library. I think nothing of it. It's a story of a kid forced to go to a school he didn't want to go to. It's a seven, ten-page story. I turn it in. I think nothing of it. All these wise-ass, you know, smart kids in the class are, are, you know, bragging about their history, where they went to private school, this and that. And our teacher comes to school on Monday, uh, the professor comes, and she's a published author, and she comes to school and she goes, I just want to tell everybody that this is the paper that we're going to base our curriculum on, basically. Like, this is the paper that you want to write. And it was my paper. Holy shit. And I was like, holy shit, too. I was yeah. like, well, are you sh- like, maybe she's wrong. She yeah, got yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was cranking you. And it was just a short story that I wrote, and my teacher was like, basically came to me and was like, listen, you can write. Like, I don't know where you're from. I don't know how you came up with this idea, where you got it. But, like, you are fully into these characters, and this is, like, a movie idea. So that moment, I basically got super confidence in that I could write because it came from a real person. Right. So that – so – but basically from that moment on, I was like, I'm going to become a writer at some point. But stand-up was, like, my dream, and I was always funny. So I'd go stand-up, stand-up for – you know, I started the comedy store – Ten years of stand-up comedy, I start touring with, like, Joe Rogan and Russell Peters, and these amazing comedians are taking me on the road because I'm kind of moving at a fast pace. But all the while, I'm writing on the side, like, at night. When I come home, I would just write for, like, two hours every night. And write, uh, like, write screenplays, Got ideas it. for screenplays. Like, and I, but you, I would would a- you would actually, like, go, you would do your comedy stuff, then you'd be at, go at home and actually do the work. And, I like, would actually do the work. I always had a ten-page-a-day discipline so that's what you did have a 10 page uh, yeah that was my thing if i could get 10 pages in a day then i could finish 90 pages in like a week and a half whatever what'd you do with all the fucking screenplays well some are some never got made some i sold okay but i would just like i would use them as samples and and people would go oh shit you could write i'll hire you for something else okay so i wrote so so i'm writing 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 
And then 10 years into my stand-up career, I write something, and Doug Ellen, who created Entourage, is a good friend of mine, and these guys, these finance guys out of New York came to Doug and said, we want to hire you to write a comedy. We have, like, a loose idea. So Doug says, let, I don't have, Doug says, he doesn't have time, but let me introduce you to Mike Young. Doug introduces me to these guys in New York. They say, can you write? Can we read something? I send them a movie that I had already written. They go, we love it. Can we talk to you about an idea? They talked about, about an idea, and that movie became My Man is a Loser with Michael Rappaport, John Stamos, Tika Sumter. You know, that became an, a, a $5 million movie that, they, that we made. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, that was my first. How did it do, in the, when you say $5 million, it cost? It cost $5 million. And to be honest, they were like big money guys. I, I basically told them the whole time, bro, we could, we, you could shoot this for two and a half million. <clears throat> but they, you know, they were big time guys and they just, yep. they basically wanted to say yes to every actor's demands. Yep. They get, everyone got a trailer. Yep. It was supposed to be, I wrote it as an independent film, but they treated yep. it like a studio movie. Yep. That was on them. They spent a lot of money and it became a really good movie. And it was my first, it was my first feature film that I wrote and then I direct and I directed it. And I had never really directed before. I'd ne not really. I'd never directed anything before. And so when they were looking for a director, I had read a bunch of stories about, like, you know, Barry Levinson, Woody Allen, Mike Nichols, all these great comedian guys who went on to direct but yep. had never gone to film school. And so I basically pitched them, and I said, I promise you, because I know all the beats of this movie, I can direct this. And they agreed. I directed it, and it was a success. We sold it to Lionsgate. And that was my first movie, and it took me out of stand-up for a little bit because I was just too tired to go do stand-up. And from My Man is a Loser, that you know went on to Amazon and Lionsgate bought it, blah, blah, blah. After that premiere, the next group of finance guys, unbeknownst to me, they were at my premiere. So after the movie, My Man is a Loser yeah. premiere, these two guys come up to me, one who I knew, Danny A., and he's like, Mike, we want to do a comedy with you. We love this movie. I'm like, this is easy. And so then my stand-up and my or then my writing, directing career kind of started to take on a life of its own. Did you do a comedy then? Or no? I did. I did a movie called A Stand-Up Guy that Netflix bought. Okay. So. And that was just another, that was just like a miracle. It was like, what? Like the day of my premiere of My Man is a Loser? You get another one. I get another movie. And so then I did A Stand-Up Guy, which was a super fun independent movie that we shot. And we only sh we shot that for like $2 million. And Netflix bought it. It, le it lived on Netflix for two years, and now it's on Amazon and all the other so platforms. So are you still making cash from it? Yeah, I still get a check. Not a big it's check. Like a nickel like, or? You know, like, like four a, cents here, yeah, nine cents there. I don't you know. know what I mean? I well, almost, they just the I'm writer, almost able to buy shoes. They, just, they had the writer's strike. Are you part of like that? Like yeah, but, yeah, but I didn't write during the writer's strike. That was recent. I, I know, I know, but are you Yeah, I'm part, in the writer's guild. You're in the writer's guild. Like you're, I've been in the writer's guild, yeah, since, okay. since my man is a loser. Yeah, my, okay, so you're. Ten years ago. So are you like. It's in SAG, is that what it is? Or the Screen Actors? No, so that's right. Writers Guild is something different. So WGA you, is the yeah. Writers Guild. And you were, you're a writer. I am a real writer. Yeah, no, but you're part of that guild. Of like course that, I am. That's, do you ever try to write for like uh, one of those late night shows? Yeah, I mean, I tried. Like maybe I sent in a bunch of jokes one time, but that's not... That's not my strength. My strength is story, character, long form, you know, television or film. and Because I'm a character guy. I'm a dialogue guy. I love to, like, pick up a character's voice and just go with it. But early on in my writing career, yeah, I tried. Like, I, I submitted for that and didn't get it. You know, I mean, I've been told no way more times than I've been told yes Have you, so That's my next question. Have you actually reached out a lot and been told no a lot? Like, I feel like you oh, haven't man. been told no, no a lot. No, I've been told no a lot. I mean... Come on. I can't remember last time I got told no. See, I don't but, think... Yeah, see, no, I, no, but, I no, think no. you... Cause, I have submitted movies. Like, I had a movie okay. called The Little Things that I still, to this day, think is, like, an amazing romantic comedy that I'm dying to do. And, like, every producer, a ton of producers in L.A., wanted to do it, almost did it, to attach people to do it, and it never got made. So... In that way, I've been told no, but I haven't. You're, I haven't really been told no. Like doors haven't been slammed in my face, yeah. because if you shut a door on me, I'm just the type of person who just goes around the door. Yeah, that's right. That's I keep it. going. Yeah, you're I just keep it moving because I believe that if you make something good, it will get out there if you just keep pushing. Yeah. And so, I grew up in the scrap metal business. My dad was an entrepreneur. 
I know what it is to work your ass off. What was the scrap metal business called? Young Iron and Metal. Young Iron and Metal. Yeah, my, so my dad was just a scrap well, peddler. My uncle was uh, grew up in the scrap business. He was shot when he was younger. He was like in the scrap business. Like yeah. he, he's alive, but I'm saying he got so like it was, it's a crazy business, Yo, the scrap business. My good know? friend's father got shot in the yeah. scrap business, and they killed him. Yeah. Fucking took his money. Jesus. But my dad, we were careful. you know. But yeah. I was rolling on a scrap truck, you know, up and down 8 Mile my whole childhood. Yeah, it's a big business here in Michigan. So you're, you're um, writing, you're directing. The other thing is... You, Sorry, you, to answer your question, I'm on my fourth movie. You, you asked me your how... Your fo- yeah, fourth movie. Yeah. And your biggest one so far has been what? Which one? I think My Man is a Loser has been my most successful... My f- Actually, I don't know because... I don't know. That's a good question. Like, I don't know, like, six... I learned the most on it. It was like the most fun one, but a stand-up guy was like, even the, because we only had like a million and a half or whatever, two million under two million to make it. When they put me in like a box, a confined box to make something creative, I actually get excited about that. Got so it. to you, me, you, you like don't the need. Yeah, you like I the- like to have to be as funny as you can mm. in this little, you know, budgeted. Piece. Yeah. I don't need the big giant money he, studio. Isn't another Detroit guy Mike Binder? Yes, friend did, of mine. So have you done stuff with him ever? Like I did the Netflix special for Saget with Binder. So I, I was on that special. Got it. Okay. So Binder and I really became friends off that, but I've never worked with Mike. Have you thought of ever like going to work for a studio or any of that stuff? Or you're too you entrepreneurial, you know, you're I've drunk. thought about it. You mean like I don't like know. President of development of, at a studio, or, things like that. Yeah, like Lionsgate back in the day, or like being the creative or writing. I don't know how it works. Like like Steven Spielberg has DreamWorks. Uh, Todd Phillips, I don't know if he has his own thing. I have no idea. Like, I mean, I have my own production company, yep. but I'm on the cusp of like doing a deal with a, a Lionsgate type of company where they come to me and go, Mike, we okay. want to be in business with you for all your projects. Here's your salary. Got it. Here's your office. We'll own a piece of you. I have thought about that bigger play, but in the meantime, it's like I've, I I keep getting jobs well, you have for s- things that I love. We talked for five minutes before here, and I don't know what you're allowed to s- say from one of the biggest singers in the world. Just you wrote a, a part for him, the biggest. I would argue one of the biggest singers in the world, and uh, yeah. I don't know if you're even allowed to say, but like. He fills out fifty thousand square foot. I mean, fifty thousand person stadiums like yeah. no other, and he's like a one man show, and it's yeah. freaking unbelievable. I, like, I, yeah, it's I, unbelievable. I, I, you don't thank have to say you. A name. You don't have to say a name, but it's um, like those are like amazing things. Like, how do you leverage that? How, I guess how you make the money, but when it performs, like, are you on the back end of it, or do you get paid up front? Like, I get paid both ways as a writer director. So you get paid up front to write, up front to direct. And then you have a, you know, you have your lawyer negotiate a piece of the back end. So if it's a hit, you make a great, li- you but know, you how make it, great money. But does it become, let's say the writing and the directing is great, okay? Let's say, Mike, you do a great job writing, directing, people love it, okay? Yeah. How does it become a big hit in the sense of, do you have a producer that then works on the distribution of it? Like, I, my, my contention is, th- there's movies that I think can be, are really good, but they never got the distribution. That is 100% correct. So that's why on this, like on my new movie... I want to make sure I get the right distribution partner who believes the same way I believe about this movie being a hit, and, and they have to put the right marketing behind it. Listen, every director right. forever that you read about has the same beef, right? Yeah. I want a distribution partner who believes the way I believe about this movie, and you have to get as much control as you can in terms of the marketing and how the movie looks to the public when it comes out because some of these companies will just buy it, own it, and they'll just go sell a piece. You know, they'll make their money. Here, Mike, you know, say I make a movie for $2 million. Here's a million, Mike, right? Now we're going to go make, you know, $800,000. we are going to sell it in, uh, you know, in, in Spain. We're going to go make a million in France. We're going to go make a million in Italy. Now they're already making their money. And they can tell you that they spent $6 million on marketing. Well, I, I have no way to really prove if that's true. Right. So there's all this, you know, all this accounting going on in that world that, you know, you, you just want a partner who's like, Mike, we think you have a hit too, and here's how we're going to market it. But, it's really tough. But is that partner the distributor or the producer? The distrib- the distribution so company. It, well, your your producer is either your f- per- person that financed it. Yes. Or the person that, you know, or, or that's a line producer who's on set every day making sure you're coming in on budget. Got it. So producer is a loose term. 
Very but you can term. really make a great amount of money if you shoot for low and you sell for high. Right. And that's really Just like what the I'm, stock market. Totally. And that's what I love about the indie world. I can make these things for a million, two million dollars. Let them go make six, four, five, nine. I don't care. But I mean, I do care because I own a piece of the back end. But I haven't yet had my. And by the way, maybe it's, you know, maybe I'm a control freak. I've been told that I'm. You know, that I can be difficult at times. Really? Be- you? Just, yeah. Come on. No, I'm like, you know, I get along with everybody, but yeah. when it comes to, like, a project I believe in, I yep. go nuts, bro. I go all in for this shit. Yep. And so I really just want a partner who's like, yo, Mike, we're with you. Just tell us what to do. Like, on my new movie, Stealing Jokes, I've got four or five of the biggest comedians in my movie. So if you're a smart, you know, distribution company and you're a smart marketer you go oh my god i already have a tour built into this we can go around the country with the people in the movie and talk about this movie it's a done deal yeah so i already know this movie is going to do very so, well but so that's really so then do you, you as the director writer are you then reaching out to distribution places or are you having someone else do that that's what i have so i have my producers like my my guys that have, are producing my movie the line guys, they reach out, but through my relationships over the years, I know people too. Yeah. So, like, my friend who I played hockey with is the president of Lionsgate's distribution. Do you still play hockey? I do still play really? hockey. Really? I didn't, okay. Yeah. I have a lot of friends that play Men's hockey. Men's league, so yeah. Men's I, league. I know, but I have a lot of friends that play hockey in the mornings. Yeah, so they, I'm, not, I'm not in my league in Detroit yet. I'm just oh. coming off my L.A. league, okay. and I'm, like, spending too much time in New York. I can get, but you, I'm, I can get you in the Detroit league. Please do. Oh, I for sure can. Please yeah, do. My guys are big hockey players. But I that, love it. The only problem is then you're going to be all friends with that group, and then you're going to have too many friends, and I'll never get to talk no, to you. No, bro. Them. You're, yo, yeah. Jason Rasnick is always in. I'm you, know I, you, know, you know how I feel, bro. I'm going to lose the— You yeah, say you want to go to the Ned, you're there. You got a table. sweet, yeah. It's a done um, deal. I got you. Wait, so, so the okay, we're talking the, the producer. We're, t- we're talking with Mike Young, comedian, writer, um, tour biggest uh, players in the world. So you, we were talking about Sebastian. You did that Young American comedy tour. He kept with comedy. You got in the movie and the writing side of things. Kind of left comedy for a little bit, and you still do the co- you you open with Sebastian. Yeah. Another guy that you traveled with was Bob Saget. We're gonna get to him in a, in a second. For many years, but like your network goes from you know Toby McGuire, Leonardo DiCaprio, um, just like I, I mentioned, Mike Binder. Um, we mentioned a mutual person we know, Paul Rosenberg. Um, he goes was, deep. He was one of the texts that you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's like I, 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 I like people. Th- I, I just like people. I'm a people. I've always been a people person. I like being social. Like, have you found a way to work with like a Toby McGuire, or is that his? Oh yeah, Toby star and I just too, you know. No, Toby and I have sold two TV shows together. Really? Yeah. So Toby, you know, this is nine years ago, eight years ago, whatever it is. Toby. When I was twenty five pounds skinnier, people said I would look like I look like Toby sometimes. But anyways, <laughs> I could see that. Oh uh, yeah, so gotta the blue this. eyes, the wide uh, yeah, eyed look. I, I, yeah, I always honest. looking like you're surprised whatever room you go into. <laughs> No, but Toby is a, is a good friend, and uh, years ago he he would su- you know he saw me do stand up when I was deep in the stand up, and he was like, I think you have a sitcom in you know in you. I think there, I think we could develop a sitcom, and obviously being from Detroit or Southfield, Michigan, I'm like super excited. I'm like, what are you talking? Like you're gonna you're gonna executive produce this? Are you serious? So we developed we developed two shows together. One we sold to ABC, and they ended up not putting it on the air. It just you know they put other shows on the air and then we sold something to HBO together and yeah I've developed did they put it on there or no no they they chose a similar thematically similar show in Crashing they did the show called Crashing about a comedian who like lived on someone's couch uh, with Pete Holmes who's who's great Uh, but that was the same exact time that I sold a show to HBO with Toby and so they put that show on and you know you don't I never forced anything with my friends who are like very well known. I never forced anything. I, I was just presented to them like, here's a great idea. And by the way, they're businessmen. So Toby's not doing any favors. You know what I mean? He's like, in his mind, he's like, I'll get sitcom money on top of Spider Man money. And he knows that it's if it's a good idea, then let's go forward with it. And he really is like a really smart, incredible storyteller himself who also knows the business so well that 
you could have a lawyer read your contract, but Toby will freaking know your contract just as well as the lawyer. Wow. And so he's Does super, he have his own production company? He does. Is he, so like Adam Sandler has his own production company, and in most of his movies, he puts his friends from- Oh, his friends in. Yeah. Like so and, uh, yeah, man. I'm, listen, man. I'm not Sandler's- Like, you know, they, those guys establish themselves, and I've had like a ziggy zag, zigzag ascension. Have you and, met- Have you met- Sandler and stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Toby and those guys used to take me to his house every week and play basketball. Oh, really? I used to play ball at Sandler's house literally every you, weekend. You, you couldn't be one of the characters in the movies? Like, the, you know, come on. You're playing I basketball. I mean, you know, I, I think I scored like 25 points at his house and he never talked to me again. Oh, I, yeah, you dominated I, in I that dominated. game? What are you doing, man? That's like... Yo, uh, bro, it's, it's the funniest story. So Sandler... It's, fu- it's oh, God. I'll be honest. Sa- he's a great guy. He's... And he's super nice to me and blah, blah, blah. But, like, Sandler had, his backboards were, like, loose. He had loose backboards. Yeah. So anything you put off the glass at Sandler's house it went bounced. in. Oh, okay. So I don't know this, like, the first time I go over there, and I'm draining off the backboard, bro, to the point where my buddy who brought me there, not Toby, but, like, another friend who's yeah. not in the business, he's like, yo, what the hell, Mike? You just showing off over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, bro, I can't miss today. And Sandler, I remember exactly what he said. He goes, how about just good shot? You know what I mean? Like, how about, he's telling my boy, like, how about your boy's just playing great? How about just be nice to your boy? And so Sandler's a super cool dude, and I, I played a lot of ball with him. And, you know, I met my network through those guys who I who do, I met. Do other guys do, like, what Sandler does with putting their friends in movies? I mean, I don't know if anybody's done it to the level of Sandler because yeah. he has carte blanche over at Netflix and wherever he goes. Yeah. But that's what I would like to do. I, I put Rap, Michael Rappaport's in three of my movies. Got it, yeah. So, so. I, when I find an actor or a piece of talent that I like to work with who's incredible and always on time and professional and delivers every time, why not work with your friends? But that doesn't mean I'm not open to new talent. Like, I yeah. love... Like on the new movie, I, I you know I met this kid Luke Null who was on SNL for a year, and I never heard of him, never seen him in my life. He auditioned for my movie, and he he nailed it so strong that I was like, dude, who are you? Like you're in, you're in my movie, and so now he's a character in my movie. That's great. And so when I could find new talent, bro, I, ne- I'm a fan. If you need a female singer, Benzinga has this girl Carly Lush recorded few music videos she works here i don't know where she is right now but she um send me her stuff yeah i don't know where carly is where's is carly malia oh she should well before we leave we'll connect Yo, um, i put my friend my buddy ira who i played hockey with his daughter's a singer she sent me five songs one of them was perfect for a scene not i resolve that schlussel okay I resolve, okay do, do, do you know my brother all? my brother probably yeah is. So we grew up in Southfield together. Yeah. He's like, Mike, my daughter's a singer. I listened to one of her songs. It fit for a scene. Oh, really? I put it in the movie. That's great. Bro, that's I great. love doing stuff like that, that man. That, People have helped me my whole life. Well, way that's what up. I was like saying, like like cameos. Like, there's no way like Leo would do one of these small things, but no, like no. cameo. And you don't want to bother them for that. Well, Leo's not doing it. I can promise you, Leo, as a business move, is not doing a cameo in my independent film. Okay, never. And he's even said to me jokingly, like, yo, young, I don't do indies. You know what I mean? Like, just joking, but kind of not. Like, he makes only $100 million movies. Yeah. When travel... But by the way, Connolly directed Who the F... Kevin Connolly from Entourage directed Who the F is Mike Young. Yeah. Bro, I'm grateful that I... uh, For my friends, and I'm grateful, but I always knew that in front of everything else, I had to be good at what I was doing, because my boys were not the type of guys who were just, like, giving favors out. You had to have something. You had to have... Yeah, I'm not... You you had to have that Yeah. Sebastian's not... Well, Sebastian's not putting me in front of 15,000 people if I'm not funny. By the way, when you're doing those things and speaking in front of so many people, like, you must have, like, DVDs people can buy. I mean, they could go on Netflix, like... Is there a way to monetize it other than just getting an appearance fee? I mean, getting your name out there more, I guess, is that the idea? Well, every time I do a Sebastian show, yeah. I pick up a 1,000 followers. And the, then I Instagram. end up getting, yeah, and then I end up getting, like, another 5,000 people watching who the F is Mike Young. Okay, got it. So it just keeps And you get paid when you people watch you, Mike? I do. I, get, I, I do. But to your point, I'd love to figure out a way to have my own little, I know there's companies out there doing it now, but where it's, like, I'm my own network. Yeah, just to get royalties. and people subscribe right. to like the Mike Young Network, and I know there are companies, and I've been offered deals yep. from those companies. I haven't fully vetted the situations yet. And then you got to, but and then you got to figure out how, to, like, what do you charge? Is it a monthly subscription? Or yeah, I it, think it's a monthly, and I think yeah. it's literally all my stuff goes onto one platform. Yep. You charge a monthly, and that's it. 
Now yeah. I'm just my own network. And yeah. that's really where the business is going because I think artists have had enough of, like, giving so much away. And so, you know, I, it's funny, Jason. I, I spend 80% of my energy literally writing and performing, you know? That little 20% that I have left, I could do better in my, like, business brain. You know I, what I mean? By the way... It's all of us, right? It's like, it's all of us. We do what we kind of like to do and what we're passionate about. There's a, a quote, I forget where it says, like, this person, um, I saw it on Instagram, it was like, the magic is doing the things you don't like to do. The magic is in doing the things you don't like to do. For and sure. And, like, when I, so I try to eat, it's like there's a book called Who Ate My Frog or something like that. But it's like, or Eat the Frog. Or, it's like, do the. Move my cheese. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah That's yeah. another one. Who my cheese. Yeah. But it's like, do the thing that you're most challenged by first thing in the morning. So then you, you and, and like some of the stuff is like reaching out versus just responding to emails, you know. Yes. And following through and, you know, and that's where a lot of connections are made. And. Absolutely. Like your network's. Your network happened, I feel like, just more organically. Sometimes you got to go force your network. And that's yeah. like, I went to a site called, I don't know, Charity Buzz, and I, you know, bought a lunch with Rich Kleiman, you know, Kevin yeah. Durant's agent. And like, that yeah. was, I for, forced that one a little bit. I, people offered to introduce me, but I didn't want, when someone's introduced me, I don't want to be in, like, take their time. If I've, like, no, so I rounded to donate to his charity instead. So yeah. it's like, you give and take, and, um, and you have to give more than you receive. So you have, a lot of things in the works. What are the, some of the couple of up, upcoming movies or shows that you can talk about that you have coming out? Or is there anything? You can talk I, could, about? I could talk about stealing jokes, right? I could talk about stealing What's jokes. What's stealing jokes about? Stealing jokes is my new movie starring Michael Rappaport, Luke Null, Jeff Dye, Ha Ha Davis. Is it out? No, no, no. Okay. I just finished it. I'm okay. in post production on stealing okay. jokes. It'll be out in price within six months. When you say you're in post production, what the heck does that mean? It means when you're done shooting, you're physically shooting your film. You edit it in post. You do color. So you color correct your movie so it looks right. You do sound design so yep. all the sounds are in. You put music in and you do everything so that it's ready to go. Do you have like go. an edit crew working on this? I, or, or I do. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. I have a whole post-production crew. Okay, cool. So my post-production crew. Where are crew, they? What state? Uh, L.A. and a couple people are in Detroit. Okay. And, you know, Dan Gilbert produced this movie with me. So we're, Dan and I are partners on this movie. Okay. And this is... By far, like my Dan most Gilbert, founder, CEO, or not CEO, founder, chairman at Rocket Mortgage and Rocket Companies, and um, owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Dan's been a great advocate and a great friend. Yep. And so I came to Dan. Another company wanted to do this movie with me in LA, yeah, over a year ago. And I started going down the line with these guys, and I didn't like the way it was going creatively. And I called Dan. I don't know if I told you this story, but I literally just texted Dan. I said, I have a movie about comedians that go on the road and start robbing comedy clubs. It's oh, a really? heist movie. And I said, it's my best idea yet. I am going down the road with some people that I'm not happy with right now. If you're interested, I'll shoot it in Detroit. He wrote back, and I'll never forget, Dan writes back, no such thing as a good deal with a bad guy regarding my guys I was going down the road with. So I said, if you want to do it, let me know. I send Dan the script. I'm thinking that he's kind of just talking just to kind of appease me. And, like, he's just talking. I don't yeah. know how seriously he's taking this. He fucking gets the script. And a week later, I don't even bother him about it because I'm like, there's no way Dan's going to do this. Yeah. A week later, he texts me. And his text message is literally my deal on a text. 50-50 partners, I'll give you the money, blah, 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 distribution this. I want this many points. My lawyer will call you Monday. So I literally am thinking to myself, he thinks I'm somebody else, and this is like a shoe company he thinks he's talking to. Mm -hmm. I'm like, there's no way this is really like my stock movie. Acts, yeah. yeah. So I just write back. <laughs> I'm so excited because I think this is going to happen. I send a heart back. Like, love you, bro. Like, I just send a heart. And he's like, what's wrong with you? I go, thank you so much. I can't believe this is happening. I still don't think it's going to happen. Come Monday, his lawyer calls. I put him in touch with my lawyer. We make a deal. I make a movie. Stealing Jokes is the movie. And here it comes. So wh when will it be coming? After Six the months? new year, for sure. But, you know. Uh, Do you have to work on now getting the distribution? We're talking to a couple of different companies. Who's going to be the, di the, di uh, the distribution company on it? But just like I was saying before, I want to have the right partner. Because is, I would put this out myself is with this the marketing machine that we have and skip the fat middleman and just... 
do this. I, I would do it the most independent way you can because that's how much I believe in this movie. Is this indie? Indie. indie. We shot it for two and a half million. And it's. It, I'm telling you, this. listen, you, you make what you want to see. Like Tarantino always says, make write the movie you want to see, direct the movie you want to see. Yeah. And, and it's, I, it's on this drama, one, it's suspense, it's, it's, it's No, it's, it's, funny. Co- it's action I know, comedy. but you said they robbed... Kim- yeah, so it's an action comedy. So there has to be some it's drama. It's every comedian... Oh, there is. But there's. it's every comedian's dream. Every oh comedian God. on the road has been screwed over by a club owner at some point. Yeah. Has been told they're owed 5000 they only get two. So every comic from Chris Rock to myself has thought to themselves, God. I am going to rob this it's place. It's like it's going back to your story of egging the fucking place. It's revenge. It is revenge. a tale for every artist, every revenge. comedian, every underdog revenge. that's ever put their life on the line for a job and gotten screwed over. And this is that movie. Oh, this is a, this is a revenge. This, this is, is a revenge This film. is almost like Rudy and Rocky. It's Rudy, it's Rocky. Rocky, Revenge of the Nerds. Yes. It's all of them, bro. It's cause revenge. Because comedians... That's why I'm here today. We revenge. get treated, even though we like bring the most joy that... You you know that's yep. our job. Notoriously, comedians don't get treated well in the business of comedy. They just they just don't until they get Sebastian's level or. But there's there are some of the funniest dudes in the world yep. that go and do a spot for forty dollars in the in New York or L A. You know what I mean? They go do a yep. spot because they're working on their craft. Yep. And to me, it's always like, how can we get comedians what they deserve? Like I want to get comedians the most money they can get, the most. Just there's too much talent to not be to be shorted. Do you like that Joe Rogan does that for his show and brings on comedians yeah, I love on his Joe, show, bro? Joe's the f- yeah, bro. Joe's the first one that put me on the road. Do you know it? Like I very you know, well. So, very really. Yeah, I haven't been on a show yet, but I I believe that I will when the movie's about to come out. But Joe Rogan can I, was the first. Can I carry your luggage that trip? Can yeah, I, bro. I'll be your security guard that trip. Okay? Yeah, you'll be my wealthiest assistant. There you go. No, you'll be my I'm, assistant I'm, I'm who the, doesn't need the job. Yes, yes, yes. I would love everybody yes. on that. And I, and, team I, and, I, and I won't be like, hey, Joe, I, I'll be I'll be respectful. I'll be I'll be quiet. I'll be quiet. I know you, our friend probably doesn't think I could be quiet, but I can be <laughs> quiet. You know, um, you don't have to be quiet, bro. I, no. I don't I don't shush people anymore. No, you can shush. It's all right. It's I've all right. I've been known yeah. to be like controlling and like. I've brought friends to like Leo's house. I've brought friends to you Toby's have? house. Yeah, yeah. Like, just you got to pick who you can bring around because, yep. you know, I've grown up with some wild people. I can't just bring anybody. Yep. But you have to know who you can bring around that type of situation just because they've got more to lose. Than, yeah, being than me. those guys is. Yeah, it's fun in one spec, but they they can't go anywhere without someone. Can I get a photo? I mean, the iPhone is yeah. ruined celebrity. Like totally. the iPhone is so ruined celebrity. I don't even know. It's like bro, part of us hanging out back in the day was blocking f- cell phones from recording Leo and Toby. Like, yep, just standing in front of them when you see yep. a cell phone going. And yep, it just happened all the time. And yep, it's a tough spot, but so you don't want to get too famous, then, Mike? I don't want to be. Uh, no, I, I, I don't. The only reason that being famous is great is so that you can just keep selling tickets to your shows. Right. The that's, fame really isn't. Well, that's, I see my friends that are famous. It isn't a great thing for a lot of them. You know, they're not complaining, but like, I don't know, it'd be a little nerve wracking. But but being well known so you can do your craft at the highest level and be paid for it. That's really what the. That's no, really what I mean, you that's want. like we have our benzing events in New York next week and. Oh, what? I don't even know what day. Are you at the Ned next week? Yes. We have events in New York next week. Um, 500, 600 people each day. That's um, amazing. FinTech Deal Day, and one's a crypto or digital asset real estate what investing. Day are you go- what day are you going? I know you know you have those guys at the financial advisory firm that we should get sponsored. Uh, what day am I? I don't know yet. I have to book. I wish you would have told me, bro. I could have thrown you a sponsor probably. I, yeah, you told me. I have people you in your me, world. You told me. You have that one. Ba- um, yeah, I know. You Big time. Me. I know. Oh yeah, they do the work for. I know the guy. Blackstone. Uh, oh, no, the companies I never heard. Oh, Blackstone. Like, you don't know in there. Okay, come on. No, I, I'm, not, I'm not even and kidding. Then, and then this. Uh, yeah, you know the Fertitta. Bro, you yeah, might have to put me on your board. For sure. Let's go, Luke. You know what I mean? On, get him out. I don't even know where Luke is. He's How do we make a business out of all the people I know? Just I, start there, a, there, there is a business there. I'm gonna have a black card. Like there, it's gonna be like a, a concierge business. Yeah. There, there, you pay to be involved every year, and you just call me. There, the, I'll get yeah, you in. Yeah. That's there. There's there's multiple businesses there. Like so, for example, here's a business: retired sports players. Um, you know, like companies could use a sports, an athlete at their company for six months because they can open doors to anywhere. You yes. know what I mean? There's a business to that. So of course like, there is. Like, you know, Cal Yeah, but they open the door. We want to get to, um, you know, 
so um, that's the kind of thing. The concierge, like, that's the, you know. I've thought about that for a while because so many people have tried to, like like we talked about before, getting in, but that's another business. You'll have to help me structure that. I'll have to figure I'm that. busy. Uh, yeah, you're you're busy. You have these movies. And in a good way. Yeah, you're, I mean, so the, that movie, say that it was, it's Stealing Jokes, it's called? Stealing Jokes. Get ready. It's coming okay. in 2024. I don't know if you're friends with this guy, but there were some scandals in this comedy world of people stealing jokes from each other. Like and I am not friends with Carlos Mencia, if that's that, who you're referring to. Yes, that's who I'm referring to. And I don't hate him. I don't even know him, really. But he used to come to the comedy store all the time. But I was at the comedy store the night that Joe Rogan went on stage with him and basically buried you him. You were there? I was there. I've seen that. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've seen that. And you're like, were you like, holy shit, Joe wants to get in a fight? Like, no, because Joe Joe's such a badass, he, he knows a, he doesn't fight. Was he a badass then? Like, yeah. Okay, Joe so. was a judo champion when he was 12. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that's, so he was like, he, he really went into him there. He went all in with no fear. And and you're a boxer, by the way. Because yeah. I, I, I mean, we should play some B-roll now, but I've seen you do that thing. and I, Because I, you've been I boxing to, since a little kid, too. I have. I've been boxing since I was like 10 years old. I love boxing. But I never did the UFC. The I never did jujitsu. I just always loved boxing. Would you do a boxing match for like five hundred thousand against um, Jake I Paul? Know. Yeah, I don't know, bro. I think I get a lot of headaches for, at this point in my life. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Jake's yeah. young. He's yeah. heavy. Yeah, he. Was. I don't want to get punched in the face anymore. I love yeah. the workout. I like jumping rope. I like hitting the bags. Yeah. That being said, I do want to get back in the ring just to mix it up a little bit, just to kind of feel you, what it is. Because you're involved with Detroit. Um, boxing, yeah, downtown boxing yeah, gym. That, yeah, very nice charity. It's foundation amazing. Helps kids. Helps uh, kids everywhere, man. Yeah. It's, a, it's a really great platform for these kids. Okay, do you hate when people say to you, tell me a joke? Yes. Yeah, I figured. Because yeah. you just like. Because I don't have one. I don't yeah. have a joke. Yeah. I have stories that I tell. Yeah, that's I have do. bits. I don't have like, yo, two guys went into a bar and da da da. I really don't have jokes like that. Yeah, see, so I, people are to like, tell me a joke. I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna do a six minute bit for you. You have stories, like that's your. I have stories, and yeah. my old my, I haven't done my podcast in a while, but I had a podcast going called Stories That Need to Be Told, and I, I kind of just, after you know, while writing and directing, I kind of faded out of my own podcast zone. So I'll probably come back with that. Is your humor more like observational humor or? It is. It's observational. It's, it's you know, the human condition. It's relatable. It's kind of stuff. It's everyday stuff that people go through, whether it's relationships, family, friendships, you know, what you see out in the world. It's it's observational, but it's edgy. It's how do edgy you, observation. How do you like Ellen DeGeneres' comedy? Like when she does a joke, she like take, keeps going, 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 and takes it, and I think it's pretty I like creative. It. Yeah, me too. I, I like it. I've always liked Ellen as a comedian. Me too. Me too. I always liked her as a I comedian, j- even I, before I did stand-up. I just bid on her last night for the, a video message. So my dad's going oh, nice. to turn 80, and there's like some eBay auction right now. And she's on a low number, but it's seven days left. Yeah. And I think if I could get, I, I, this, I'm committed to winning this auction. Oh, shoot. Don't <laughs> yeah. publish this for seven days. By the way, um, this is a great character. Like, you bid on so on auctions oh, for you, celebrities all the time. You have no it's idea. It's amazing. You have no idea. That's Maybe like. You have no idea. Yo, they did the movie. Do you, you, know, do you know my Tom Brady debacle, and I still just better get. I, it's Tom Brady, and I spent serious money. And I brought clients, and it was a debacle. And they still haven't given you the Brady gift? Like, my wife's involved with the charity. They probably give us the money back and stuff, but can't do that. No, the Brady gift. We went to Tampa. We were at the practice. Tom Brady was 20 yards from us. But the guy that was there with us, he played golf with the old coach yet the day before. The old coach didn't come. I was supposed to get relayed. Then Tom's leaving the practice, walking in the locker room, like, to our guy that was there. I'm like, Tom. And, like, message didn't get relayed. And then I didn't want to, like, call the person who had the charity, like, say, hey, this is not good. I did finally late at night, like, at 9 o'clock. She's like, holy shit. And they're trying to, like, that make it up that, like, while we're there. Never. And I didn't happen. It didn't happen. And, like, I don't even think Tom realizes this stuff. He doesn't know. Because I have this story with Tom. I promise you Tom Brady has zero idea. Because when I was in college, Tom Brady was in tears to me and my two best friends. For real, we, I thought it was a dream that I had when I was in college. I did. I thought it was a dream that I had that Tom Brady uh, cried to us. I thought it was a dream. About three or four, no, my, my daughter's bat mitzvah uh, two years ago, or a year and a half ago, that my, one, my best friend who's in New York, my from Detroit, where I'm into, I'm, I, ta- I brought up this Tom Brady thing. I'm like, I think I had this dream, and Dave and Jeff, they had the same, they had the same exact story. It was after, I think, Michigan lost to um, Illinois, and outside Rick's, but where Steve's back room is, Tom is sitting on the ledge. Like, we, I remember, and the picnic table, we're sitting there. 
Tom's on the ledge. All the Michigan pole players are going down to Rick's, and Tom is literally um, like emotional and tears about the loss. And this is like, cause, you know, his quarterback channel, you know, going yeah. back and forth with Drew Henson. And I just want to know if Tom remembers that story. And like, hey, so we we so we are going down. I bought this auction item. I go to Tampa, and I went and got all this stuff, and uh, we're there. And he's you know, and then it's doesn't no happen. Brady. What? No Brady. No Brady. And it's like we could there, get we there, could get that. There's a, we, there we is a movie happen. Brady for eighty, and then he meets those people. You know? Yeah. No, and, there's uh, a movie in what you do because yeah. there's that is such a trip because there was yeah. a movie called Nebraska where the one person like always. Thought that everything that came in the mail was going to happen. Every sweepstakes, oh, they, really? they yeah, went yeah. after everybody for the sweepstakes. Yeah, yeah. It really, yo, bro. yeah. you got to be like a sweepstakes oh, I, addict. You, you got to be careful buying these auctions because some of these things like get complicated and they don't happen. Like there's one right now where you can go on the set of. Um, some movie that's getting filmed. I could show it to you. That's why the one I just sent you with Jesse Itzler. Like go to a basketball game with him. Like I'm. I'll I'll make uh, sure that no happens. no I'm about, no, I, I, you bid. I, I didn't bid yet but we have seven I'm gonna we're yeah. gonna do that one we're yeah. gonna do that but he said only two seats so how are we gonna do that I oh mean, then we need, it's you we, and Jesse we need four though I mean if you're gonna come well, like you're bidding you, you you get us four well he, yeah well he owns part of the team I feel like yeah right? yeah yeah he does because yeah. you like knew him didn't he make that little jingle for the yeah and go New York go New York go. I've known Jesse thir- almost I how signed you- his marriage license no you didn't you yeah s- I did you signed his marriage Katuba yeah. yeah. No way. Yeah. Shut I wanna, up. Jesse and I, are, he's one of my best friends for 30 years. Really? When I got out of college and I moved to L.A. Year, a few years after college, my old college roommate was like, you got to meet my boy Jesse. You guys will be best friends. Where and Jesse you, was, uh, my, my roommate was from New York. Yeah, University of Arizona, I know. That's what yeah, I went to U of A. And so my yeah. roommate was from New York. He knew Jesse. Oh. And so I walked up to Jesse. He was alone in a restaurant. I was alone. I go, hey, man, Mark Feinside says, like, we should be yeah. friends. And he's like, what's up? Yo, let's be, we'll be friends. And next thing you know, I'm in his video, and we're hanging out, and cut to 30 years later. Our, our, love Jesse. Our original investor in Benzinga, who's done very well off Benzinga, um, is like you no know, Brad Keywell. They somehow, oh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's good friends with Jesse. Yeah, he's good. For, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. I've seen him. Uh, I actually, actually, I performed for one of Brad's like fundraisers somewhere, but I actually don't even know Brad that well. I know I know Brad well. Yeah, yeah, yeah he seems he, like a good dude. And yeah, yeah, he's him uh, and Jesse are tight. Yeah, so that's and that's yeah, that's small. Brad world. and Eric, they're from Chicago. Um, like yeah. they started they started Groupon. Yes, if that's small a, company and, and many other. I went to high school with Lefkowski. You did? Yeah. Like your year? Or he's he's older. younger than me. He's younger than you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like a year younger. Did you know him? I knew him very well. Played baseball with him. Knew his dad. Like if I text him and say. He'll be super happy. Oh, really? Yes. I'll send him the photo. We're still minute. friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. He, He's he, a good dude. Him and Brad are the ones that invested in Benzinga. Yeah. The first time. Eric and Brad, wow. they, they are business titans, though. They just Titans. Like, titans. Like, they, you know. Lefkowski, he's so cool. The last time I saw him, we were, actually, I don't even want to tell this, because it like, sounds like a name drop story. Sandler was in the same room, and I, and his ki- and Eric's kid in wanted to meet Sandler because Eric's Eric's kid sings too. By the way, <clears throat> does he? No, she. I oh. think yeah. <coughs> so I said to Eric, "Yo, I'll go up to Sandler right now and like introduce your kid." He's like, "No, no, 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 don't, don't, don't bother him." And he just didn't want me to bother him, so I didn't bother him. But those are good dudes, man. Fresh out of were Southfield, you guys Michigan. Were you guys on the West Coast? We were heading to. Okay. The West Coast, because because we're heading to the West in Coast. in Hawaii. Is uh, we met Sandler in Hawaii. My kids, we are he's at the pool, and he's the nicest guy, celebrity, or whatever yeah. you want to say. My son was like six, and he's like Adam's. Like we're in this, there, take a picture with Adam, and, he's, and Adam's like, you probably can do a better imitation of Adam, but he's like, uh, better not fart on me, kid, you know. <laughs> and then and then after the photo, and then he's like, Adam's like. He stole my wallet, like to my my six year old. It's the funniest thing ever. I have part yeah. of the video. He's a good but, dude. Yeah, he is. Uh, seems like a good guy. Um, yeah, but that's class act. Yeah. So that's uh, all right. What else? What else did I miss about you? You're you're on Instagram at where? I think we covered a lot of it uh, at the real Mike Young. The real Mike Young. Okay. A Saget. You toured with for how many I years? Toured with Saget for ten years. He's one of my one of my best but, friends in the world. So Love Bob, miss Bob tremendously. You talked to him like every day when he was alive. <laughs> obviously, we spoke every day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that was one of the craziest things that ever happened in my life. You know, was that I woke up one day and got a call from Stamos that he heard that Bob was in an accident. 
And I texted Bob. I was like, yo. I said, hey. Obviously, I heard nothing. I texted his wife. Next thing I know, she called me crying, screaming that Bob passed away. And so that was one of the worst days ever. And I'll, uh, you know, I'll honor Bob with everything I do in my career as long as I live. Because he gave me, you know, put me in front of thousands of people for 10 years. I was his guy. I opened for him. It was just me and Bob doing a two-man oh, really? show. That was it. So you guys would you travel know? together? Yeah, he's in two of my movies. You know, I put Bob in a stand-up guy. And he's obviously, he's in Who the F is Mike Young. It was such crazy, like, I, by the way, that, ho <laughs> that, ho that hotel he was at, I stayed there. Um, Did you notice how slippery the floors were? I don't remember. I mean, I was it's like. known to have slippery floors. And really? Bob, yeah, Bob slipped and fell. And freaking hit his head, and that was it. Yeah, so I think I stayed. I stayed the one next door. It was like a J-Dub. There was, was, was it the Four Seasons or the Ritz? Ritz. Ritz and the J-Dub's uh, connected yep. to it. And um, I don't remember. Um, yeah, just, man. That's crazy. Well, I was my guy. And and his wife, you're close with. Yeah, Kelly. She's awesome. I saw her at the Ned when we went and saw you. Oh yeah, it was okay. a great night. Yep. So now I, I it's terrible. Yeah. I mean, life is precious. I mean, that's what we've learned Bro, through all that's this. That's it. People are like, Mike, why are you so happy? All that you seem like you're always upbeat. I am an eternal optimist, and it's pretty much because. My dad died when I was 20. I had all kinds of tragedies as a young, young kid in my family, and I knew from a very young age, life is short. How'd your dad die? Pancreatic cancer. Fast. You know what I mean? Like, it happened fast. Just out of nowhere? Out of nowhere. Ran 10 miles a day, was a college athlete, in shape. How old Greatest is he? Greatest guy ever. He was 47. Fucking A, dude. Fucking A. And so he was a big Detroit guy. He had a lot of friends in Detroit. What did he do? He was in the scrap metal business. Oh, yeah, he told me. Yeah. yeah, and so between that and, like, multiple relatives around a short period of time passing away, I made a freaking conscious decision at a young age. I'm going to enjoy the shit out of my life. I'm going to pick the job I want and do it, and I'm just going to go all in and, and just try to have a positive life. And, and be you. What is your mom meant to you, your career and you? My mom loves, the, she loves the Sebastian slept in the basement. She loves that she's gotten to meet Leo. She, she, but my mom's funny on her own. She, my mom's really a funny person. She's been through a lot, man. My mom's had a couple strokes, and she's doing great. But, like, my mom has been through wars on her own. But she is, she taught public school for 25 years in Southfield. So she had the wildest students of all time. So you, my mom is just like a quick-witted, funny person who loves kids. She loves my career. She loves what we get to do. You know, I can't bring her to every day. Like, I, you know, people don't understand. Comedians don't want their family coming because it's too much pressure when you're on stage. So, like, I always have to tell my mom, you're not going to this show. Why not? Sebastian knows me. I already texted him. He says I can go. I'm going. I'm like, I don't care what he says. You're not going. You know, so it's like that type of relationship. But do, but, 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 but do you think she's inspired you or your dad to oh, uh, be yeah. successful in this world and yeah. make the mark that you've made thus far? Yeah. My dad always taught me. He always used to say to me, just be great at something. Just work your ass off to be great at one thing. And my one thing was like writing, which evolutionar evolutionarily is comedy. Yep. Comedy is writing. So it's really just... Content, whatever I write, I try to be great at, and really that motivated me to all you know to just pick this field, go all in on it, and be nice to people. My dad used to always say, You're gonna see the same people on the way up as you are gonna be on the way down, and you better treat everybody with respect. And so, my dad was like that guy, he had friends, he'd be friends with the the guy that worked on the house and the guy that owned the neighborhood. You know what yep, I mean? Exactly. And he didn't and care who you were. He was cool to everybody. And I live by that code. I am. I, I don't care who you are. I'm not better than you. I'm not worse than you. I don't see myself as anything better than the dude that grabs the dishes at the Ned who's taking it yep. back to the kitchen. I really don't. And that's what I see that your parents infuse in you because, you know, you, you said be great at something. And I, I guess maybe you're not. It's not a, a ta like a talent to relationships, but you're great at relationships because you are a kind, giving, funny, easy person to get along with. And that, in, in, like from your parents, uh, that last part you mentioned, your dad said, doesn't matter where they are, be nice. You know, it's a small world. And just like my dad, you know, my dad's as nice to the car parker as he is to, you know, whoever. Yeah, and, that's it. And, and, and that's who you are. And, and that 
those are just values that just happen to you as you know, and you don't notice them, but you notice, but you notice them by watching, you know, and Thanks. that's the, and so my last question though, is what is your first or worst job? Your first or your worst or both. That's my like idea. in life or in like life. out in the ho- in Ooh. life. Like you, like you, you could have been a, 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 a bus boy. You could have been washing dishes. Your first or your worst job. Either just whatever's easier. It's my by the way, my first job was my worst job, oh. and I got fired in one day. Oh wow! Out of high school, all my friends kept saying, "Yo, we're doing this phone call. We're doing these phone call cold calling things where we're selling property up in northern Michigan, yeah. and everyone says they're making money. So all my friends are telling me how they're making all this money yeah. by cold calling families. And so day one on the job, this is my first job. Um, in this marketing company, it looks like this. It's like we're all at a desk making calls to cold calls. The first person I call. I say, hey, we've got some property. It's like 5 o'clock in the afternoon. We've got property up in northern Michigan if you're interested. He goes, don't you ever call my house again. I'm at dinner with my family. He's cursing at me, and, I, and I'm like, I'm beside myself. So just like my metaphorical egging, I call the guy back, and I go, I know exactly where you live. Don't ever talk to me like that again. Oh, yeah. And the same time I did that, the manager of the cold calling place tapped me on the shoulder. He goes, you're fired. Wait, he heard you do it? He heard me do it. He was walking by right when oh I called God. the guy back, oh my and God. he fired me. So my first and worst job was a cold-calling job in a cubicle, and I knew I wasn't cut out for the regular world, yeah. and that was it. That's I had good. many jobs since then that I liked and learned a lot from, but that was my first and my worst. That's that, no, that's, a, that's a good one. That's, that's a funny one. That's yeah, a, bro. And the teacher, the, 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 I know where you live. Uh, <laughs> I know where you live. I yeah. couldn't help it. I made a yeah. phony on him. Yeah. No, that. that the original so, Jerky Boys. And, and, yeah, you should have. I'm surprised you didn't make any of those videos, prank calls. I love prank phone calls. I, oh, love, bro, I listen on Howard Stern. Have you ever met, have you ever done that one yet? That's where you got to go for your next movie, Howard yes. Stern. I've done the wrap-up show, but okay. I haven't done Howard. Yeah. Like, I haven't been on Howard. Yeah. Rappaport goes on there. Uh, bro, that was yeah. when... I brought Rappaport on the wrap-up show for My Man is a Loser. Aha. That's when he went bananas in the room, and they started putting him on Howard Stern all the time. Oh, see, there you go. So I kind of so like maybe helped So maybe he'll take that. you for the next, you know, for stealing jokes, right? Like, I, I think so. Okay. I will, I'll reach out properly. Yeah, is, is Rappaport in that movie? Yes. Oh, so he's, he's great. He, and by the way, my brother Rob is in a scene with Rappaport, oh, really? and my brother is funny. Oh, my wow. brother plays Rappaport's doctor. Oh, my, really? Yeah, and I give him a scene, and he nails it. It's it's really maybe I'll be an actor. All right, all right. We've gone we've gone all which way around. There's so much more to this guy, Mike, Mike Young, comedian, writer, director, entrepreneur, director. Uh, six degrees of Mike Young. You name a person he's connected with. Uh, after we're here, we're about to like FaceTime Jesse Itzler. We're going to FaceTime Leo. We're going to FaceTime every single person. I'll let you know how it goes. All right, I'm just kidding. We don't bother these guys. Let them do their thing. Maybe we'll go to the basketball game with them. Then we'll see. All right, Mike, thank you for coming on the Thanks, Raz Jason. Report. And guys, get his movies. Type in Mike Young into your, th- your whatever, your TV, your voice. Get his movie. Get, let him make an extra quarter or a dollar on some of these royalties. Some of the bigger Try ones. Trying to get there. some new shoes. New shoes. His shoes. He's, oh, he does have the QCs, though, right? What are these? I don't know. No, they're, not, th- they're not QCs. They're, they're uh, on. Uh, on cloud. On cloud. It's so, a public stock. Bro, it's so funny that you just said that because yeah. I thought it was QC also. Yeah, yeah the little Q. I know. It's, it's on, on cloud. It's a public stock. But I was looking to see our stock guy there. I don't see him. But on cloud. He told me about it, about it a long time ago, and I never bought it, and it fucking took off. Yeah, it's you know? doing great. Yeah, so. All right, guys. We out. We out.